Inner Mongolia or NEI Mongol Mongolian, Mongolian script, Ober Mongol, Mongolian Cyrillic, Ver Mongol Over Mongol, Wer M, Simplified Chinese, Ne Men Gu Traditional Chinese, Ne Men Gu Pinyin, PRC Standard Mandarin, Ne Men Gu, Rock Standard Mandarin, Ne Men Gu, Officially the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region or NEI Mongol Autonomous Region NMAR, is one of the autonomous regions of the People's Republic of China, located in the north of the country. Its border includes most of the length of China's border with Mongolia, and a small section of China's border with Russia. Its capital is Hohat. Other major cities include Baotou, Chifeng, and Ordos. The autonomous region was established in 1947, incorporating the areas of the former Republic of China provinces of Suiyuan, Shahar, Ri, Laobei, and Xing'an, along with the northern parts of Gansu and Ningxia. Its area makes it the third largest Chinese subdivision, constituting approximately 1,200,000 square kilometers (463,000 square miles) and 12% of China's total land area. It recorded a population of 24,706,321 in the 2010 census, accounting for 1.84% of mainland China's total population. Inner Mongolia is the country's 23rd most populous province-level division. The majority of the population in the region are Han Chinese, with a sizable titular Mongol minority. The official languages are Mandarin and Mongolian, the latter of which is written in the traditional Mongolian script, as opposed to the Mongolian Cyrillic alphabet, which is used in the state of Mongolia formerly often described in the West as Outer Mongolia. Name In Chinese, the region is known as Inner Mongolia, where the terms of Inner, Outer are derived from Manchu Dorgi, Tulurgi, cf. Mongolian Dodagadu, Gadagadu. Inner Mongolia is distinct from Outer Mongolia, which was a term used by the Republic of China and previous governments to refer to what is now the independent state of Mongolia plus the Republic of Tuva in Russia. The term inner ne nei referred to the nei fan ne fan inner tributary, i.e. those descendants of Genghis Khan who granted the title Khan king in Ming and Qing dynasties and lived in part of southern part of Mongolia. In Mongolian, the region was called Dodagadu Mongol during Qing rule and was renamed into Ober Mongol in 1947, Ober meaning the southern side of a mountain, while the Chinese term nei mengu was retained. In recent years, some Mongols mainly those who support independence from China began to call Inner Mongolia Nan Chinese, Nan Pinyin, Nan Mengu, literally, South Mongolia, and with it came the change of English translation from Inner Mongolia to Southern Mongolia. History much of what is known about the history of Greater Mongolia, including Inner Mongolia, is known through Chinese chronicles and historians. Before the rise of the Mongols in the 13th century, what is now central and western Inner Mongolia, especially the Hetao region, alternated in control between Chinese agriculturalists in the south and Xiongnu, Shanbei, Khitan, Yurchin, Tuju, and nomadic Mongol of the north. The historical narrative of what is now Eastern Inner Mongolia mostly consists of alternations between different Tungusic and Mongol tribes, rather than the struggle between nomads and Chinese agriculturalists. Early history Slab grave cultural monuments are found in northern, central and eastern Mongolia, Inner Mongolia, northwestern China, southern, central eastern and southern Baikal territory. Mongolian scholars prove that this culture related to the Proto-Mongols. During the Zhou dynasty, central and western Inner Mongolia the Hetao region and surrounding areas were inhabited by nomadic peoples such as the Lufan, Linhu, and Di, while eastern Inner Mongolia was inhabited by the Donghu. During the Warring States period, King Wuling (340–295 BC) of the state of Zhao, based in what is now Hebei and Shaanxi provinces, pursued an expansionist policy towards the region. After destroying the Di state of Zhangshan in what is now Hebei province, he defeated the Linhu and Lufan and created the Commandery of Yunzhong near modern Hohat. King Wuling of Zhao also built a long wall stretching through the Hetao region. 
After Qin Shi Huang created the first unified Chinese Empire in 221 BC, he sent the general Meng Tian to drive the Xiongnu from the region, and incorporated the old Zhao Wall into the Qin Dynasty Great Wall of China. He also maintained two commanderies in the region, Zhuan and Yunzhang, and moved 30,000 households there to solidify the region. After the Qin dynasty collapsed in 206 BC, these efforts were abandoned. During the Western Han dynasty, Emperor Wu sent the general Wei Qing to reconquer the Hedao region from the Xiongnu in 127 BC. After the conquest, Emperor Wu continued the policy of building settlements in Hedao to defend against the Xiongnu. In that same year, he established the commanderies of Xuaofang and Wuwan in Hedao. At the same time, what is now eastern Inner Mongolia was controlled by the Shanbei, who would later on eclipse the Xiongnu in power and influence. During the Eastern Han Dynasty 25-220 AD, Xiongnu who surrendered to the Han Dynasty began to be settled in Hedao, and intermingled with the Han immigrants in the area. Later on during the Western Jin Dynasty, it was a Xiongnu noble from Hetao, Lu Yuan, who established the Han Zhao Kingdom in the region, thereby beginning the Sixteen Kingdoms period that saw the disintegration of northern China under a variety of Han and non-Han regimes. The Sui Dynasty 581 and Tang Dynasty 618 re-established a unified Chinese empire, and like their predecessors, they conquered and settled people into Hetao, though once again these efforts were aborted when the Tang Empire began to collapse. Hetao, along with the rest of what now consists Inner Mongolia, was then taken over by the Khitan Empire Liao Dynasty, founded by the Khitans, a nomadic people originally from what is now the southern part of Manchuria and eastern Inner Mongolia. They were followed by the western Shah of the Tangits, who took control of what is now the western part of Inner Mongolia including western Hetao. The Khitans were later replaced by the Yurchins, precursors to the modern Manchus, who established the Jin Dynasty over Manchuria and northern China. Topic. Mongol and Ming periods Topic. After Genghis Khan unified the Mongol tribes in 1206 and founded the Mongol Empire, the Tangut Western Shah Empire was ultimately conquered in 1227, and the Yurchin Jin dynasty fell in 1234. In 1271, Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan established the Yuan dynasty. Kublai Khan's summer capital Shangdu aka Xanadu, was located near present-day Dolaner. During that time Angad and Kungjarad peoples dominated the area of what is now Inner Mongolia. After the Yuan dynasty was overthrown by the Han-led Ming dynasty in 1368, the Ming captured parts of Inner Mongolia including Shangdu and Yingchang. The Ming rebuilt the Great Wall of China at its present location, which roughly follows the southern border of the modern Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region though it deviates significantly at the Hebei Inner Mongolia border. The Ming established the three guards composed of the Mongols there. Soon after the Tumu incident in 1449, when the Orat ruler Asen Taishi captured the Chinese emperor, Mongols flooded south from Outer Mongolia to Inner Mongolia. Thus from then on until 1635, Inner Mongolia was the political and cultural center of the Mongols during the Northern Yuan dynasty. Topic. Qing period Topic. The eastern Mongol tribes near and in Manchuria, particularly the Korchan and southern Khalkha in today. S. Inner Mongolia intermarried, formed alliances with, and fought against the Yurchin tribes until Nurhaci, the founder of the new Jin dynasty, consolidated his control over all groups in the area in 1593. The Manchus gained far-reaching control of the Inner Mongolian tribes in 1635, when Ligdan Khan's son surrendered the Chakar Mongol tribes to the Manchus. The Manchus subsequently invaded Ming China in 1644, bringing it under the control of their newly established Qing dynasty. Under the Qing dynasty 1636 Greater Mongolia was administered in a different way for each region. Outer Mongolia. This region corresponds to the modern state of Mongolia, plus the Russian-administered region of Tanuyuriankai, and a part of northern Xinjiang. It included the four leagues of the Khalkha Mongols north of the Gobi, as well as the Tanu Yuriankai and Khovd regions in northwestern Mongolia, which were overseen by the general of Uliastai from the city of Uliastai. Inner Mongolia 
This region corresponded to most of modern Inner Mongolia and some neighboring areas in Liaoning and Jilin provinces. The banners and tribes in this region came under six leagues Chulgan, Jurim, Judah, Josutu, Zilingal, Yalankab, and Yekaju. Taoshi Mongolia. The Alishan Ulud and Ajin Torgud banners were separate from the Amags of Outer Mongolia and the Chulgans of Inner Mongolia. This territory is equivalent to modern-day Alxa League, the westernmost part of what is now Inner Mongolia. The Shahar banners were controlled by the military commander of Shahar now Their extent corresponded to southern Yalankab and Bayanur in modern Inner Mongolia, plus the region around Zhangjiakou in Hebei province. At the same time, the jurisdiction of some border departments of Zhili and Shaanxi provinces also belonged to this region. The Giwa Tumd banner was controlled by the military commander of Suyuan now Hohat. This corresponds to the vicinities of the modern city of Hohat. At the same time, the jurisdiction of some border departments of modern Shaanxi province also belonged to this region. The Hulunbir region in what is now northeastern Inner Mongolia was part of the jurisdiction of the general of Heilongjiang, one of the three generals of Manchuria. The Inner Mongolian Shahar leader Ligdan Khan, a descendant of Genghis Khan, opposed and fought against the Qing until he died of smallpox in 1634. Thereafter, the Inner Mongols under his son Ehi Khan surrendered to the Qing and was given the title of Prince, Qin Wang Qin Wang, and Inner Mongolian nobility became closely tied to the Qing royal family and intermarried with them extensively. Ehi Khan died in 1661 and was succeeded by his brother Abunai. After Abunai showed disaffection with Manchu Qing rule, he was placed under house arrest in 1669 in Shenyang and the Kangxi Emperor gave his title to his son Borni. Abunai then bid his time and then he and his brother Lubazing revolted against the Qing in 1675 during the revolt of the Three Feudatories, with 3,000 Shahar Mongol followers joining in on the revolt. The revolt was put down within two months. The Qing then crushed the rebels in a battle on April 20, 1675, killing Abunai and all his followers. Their title was abolished, all Shahar Mongol royal males were executed even if they were born to Manchu Qing princesses, and all Shahar Mongol royal females were sold into slavery except the Manchu Qing princesses. The Shahar Mongols were then put under the direct control of the Qing emperor unlike the other Inner Mongol leagues which maintained their autonomy. Despite officially prohibiting Han Chinese settlement on the Manchu and Mongol lands, by the 18th century the Qing decided to settle Han refugees from northern China who were suffering from famine, floods, and drought into Manchuria and Inner Mongolia so that Han Chinese farmed 500,000 hectares in Manchuria and tens of thousands of hectares in Inner Mongolia by the 1780s. Ordinary Mongols were not allowed to travel outside their own leagues. Mongols were forbidden by the Qing from crossing the borders of their banners, even into other Mongol banners and from crossing into Nidi the Han Chinese 18 provinces and were given serious punishments if they did in order to keep the Mongols divided against each other to benefit the Qing. During the 18th century, growing numbers of Han Chinese settlers had illegally begun to move into the Inner Mongolian steppe. By 1791 there had been so many Han Chinese settlers in the front Gorlo's banner that the Jasik had petitioned the Qing government to legalize the status of the peasants who had already settled there. During the 19th century, the Manchus were becoming increasingly sinicized, and faced with the Russian threat, they began to encourage Han Chinese farmers to settle in both Mongolia and Manchuria. This policy was followed by subsequent governments. The railroads that were being built in these regions were especially useful to the Han Chinese settlers. Land was either sold by Mongol princes, or leased to Han Chinese farmers, or simply taken away from the nomads and given to Han Chinese farmers. The Jindandao Incident, a rebellion by an ethnic Chinese secret society called Jindandao occurred in Inner Mongolia in November 1891 and massacred 150,000 Mongols before being suppressed by government troops in late December. Topic. Republic of China and the Second World War periods Topic. Outer Mongolia gained independence from the Qing dynasty in 1911, when the Jetsundamba Kutugtu of the Khalkha was declared the Bogod Khan of Mongolia. Although almost all banners of Inner Mongolia recognized the Bogod Khan as the supreme ruler of Mongols, the internal strife within the region prevented a full reunification. 
The Mongol rebellions in Inner Mongolia were counterbalanced by princes who hoped to see a restored Qing dynasty in Manchuria and Mongolia, as they considered the theocratic rule of the Bogod Khan would be against their modernizing objectives for Mongolia. Eventually, the newly formed Republic of China promised a new nation of five races Han, Manchu, Mongol, Tibetan and Uyghur, and suppressed the Mongol rebellions in the area, forcing the Inner Mongolian princes to recognize the Republic of China. The Republic of China reorganized Inner Mongolia into provinces Ri province was created to include the Juda and Josutu leagues plus the Chengdu area in what is now northern Hebei. Shahar province was created to include Zilingal League as well as much of the former territory of the Eight Banners. Suyuan province was created to include Yalankab League, Yekaju League, and the Hedao region former Giwa Tum territory. Hulun Bir stayed within Heilongjiang in Manchuria, which had become a province. Most of Jurem League came under the new province of Fengtian in southern Manchuria. Taoshi Mongolia, i.e. Alishan and Ajin Leagues, was incorporated into neighboring Gansu province. Later on Ningxia province was split out of northern Gansu, and Taoshi Mongolia became part of Ningxia. Some Republic of China maps still show this structure. The history of Inner Mongolia during the Second World War is complicated, with Japanese invasion and different kinds of resistance movements. In 1931, Manchuria came under the control of the Japanese puppet state Manchukuo, taking some Mongol areas in the Manchurian provinces i.e. Hulun Bir and Jurem leagues along. Ri was also incorporated into Manchukuo in 1933, taking Juu Uda and Josutu leagues along with it. These areas were occupied by Manchukuo until the end of World War II in 1945. In 1937, the Empire of Japan openly and fully invaded Republic of China by war. On December 8, 1937, Mongolian Prince Demchugdongrub also known as De Wang, declared an independence of the remaining parts of Inner Mongolia i.e. the Suiyuan and Shahar provinces as Mengjiang, and signed an agreement with Manchukuo and Japan. Its capital was established at Zongbei, now in Hebei province, with the Japanese puppet government's control extending as far west as the Hohat region. The Japanese advanced was defeated by Wei Muslim General Ma Hongbin at the Battle of West Suiyuan and Battle of Wuwan. After 1945, Inner Mongolia has remained part of China. The Mongol Ulanhu fought against the Japanese. Ethnic Mongolian guerrilla units were created by the Kuomintang nationalists to fight against the Japanese during the war in the late 30s and early 40s. These Mongol militias were created by the Ajin and Alasha-based commissioner's offices created by the Kuomintang. Prince Demchugdongrob's Mongols were targeted by Kuomintang Mongols to defect to the Republic of China. The nationalists recruited 1,700 ethnic minority fighters in Inner Mongolia and created war zones in the Tumut Banner, Ulanchab League, and Ordos Yekaju League. Topic: <laughs> People's Republic of China. Topic: The communist movement gradually gained momentum as part of the Third Communist International in Inner Mongolia during the Japanese period. By the end of World War II, the Inner Mongolian faction of the Comintern had a functional militia, and actively opposed the attempts at independence by Dewang's Chinggisid princes on the grounds of fighting feudalism. Following the end of World War II, the Chinese Communists gained control of Manchuria as well as the Inner Mongolian Communists with decisive Soviet support, and established the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region in 1947. The Comintern army was absorbed into the People's Liberation Army. Initially the autonomous region included just the Hulun Bir region. Over the next decade, as the Communists established the People's Republic of China and consolidated control over mainland China, Inner Mongolia was expanded westwards to include five of the six original leagues except Josutu League, which remains in Liaoning Province, the northern part of the Shahar region, by then a league as well southern Shahar remains in Hebei Province, the Hedao region, and the Alishan and Ajin banners. Eventually, near all areas with sizable Mongol populations were incorporated into the region, giving present-day Inner Mongolia its elongated shape. The leader of Inner Mongolia during that time, as both regional CPC secretary and head of regional government, was Ulanhu. During the Cultural Revolution, the administration of Ulanhu was purged, and a wave of repressions was initiated against the Mongol population of the autonomous region. 
In 1969 much of Inner Mongolia was distributed among surrounding provinces, with Hulan Bir divided between Heilongjiang and Jilin, Jurem going to Jilin, Juu Uda to Liaoning, and the Alishan and Ajin region divided among Gansu and Ningxia. This was reversed in 1979. Inner Mongolia has seen considerable development since Deng Xiaoping instituted Chinese economic reform in 1978. For about 10 years since 2000, Inner Mongolia's GDP growth has been the highest in the country, along with Guangdong largely owing to the success of natural resource industries in the region. GDP growth has continually been over 10%, even 15% and connections with the wolf economy to the north has helped development. However, growth has come at a cost with huge amounts of pollution and degradation to the grasslands. Attempts to attract ethnic Chinese to migrate from other regions, as well as urbanize those rural nomads and peasants has led to huge amounts of corruption and waste in public spending, such as Ordo City. Acute uneven wealth distribution has further exacerbated ethnic tensions, many indigenous Mongolians feeling they are increasingly marginalized in their own homeland, leading to riots in 2011 and 2013. Geography. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Officially Inner Mongolia is classified as one of the provincial level divisions of North China, but its great stretch means that parts of it belong to Northeast China and Northwest China as well. It borders eight provincial level divisions in all three of the aforementioned regions Heilongjiang, Jilin, Liaoning, Hebei, Shaanxi, Shaanxi, Ningxia, and Gansu, tying with Shaanxi for the greatest number of bordering provincial level divisions. Most of its international border is with Mongolia, which, in Chinese, is sometimes called Outer Mongolia, while a small portion is with Russia's Zabaykalsky Krai. Inner Mongolia largely consists of the northern side of the North China Kraton, a tilted and sedimented Precambrian block. In the extreme southwest is the edge of the Tibetan Plateau where the autonomous region's highest peak, main peak in the Helen Mountains reaches 3,556 metres and is still being pushed up today in short bursts. Most of Inner Mongolia is a plateau averaging around 1,200 metres 3 feet in altitude and covered by extensive loess and sand deposits. The northern part consists of the Mesozoic era Kingan Mountains, and is owing to the cooler climate more forested, chiefly with Manchurian elm, ash, birch, Mongolian oak, and a number of pine and spruce species. Where discontinuous permafrost is present north of Hyler District, forests are almost exclusively coniferous. In the south, the natural vegetation is grassland in the east and very sparse in the arid west, and grazing is the dominant economic activity. Owing to the ancient, weathered rocks lying under its deep sedimentary cover, Inner Mongolia is a major mining district, possessing large reserves of coal, iron ore and rare earth minerals, which have made it a major industrial region today. <laughs> Climate Topic. Due to its elongated shape, Inner Mongolia has a wide variety of regional climates. Throughout the region, the climate is based off a four-season, monsoon climate. The winters in Inner Mongolia are very long, cold, and dry with frequent blizzards, though snowfall is so light that Inner Mongolia has no modern glaciers even on the highest Helen peaks. The spring is short, mild and arid, with large, dangerous sandstorms, whilst the summer is very warm to hot and relatively humid except in the west where it remains dry. Autumn is brief and sees a steady cooling, with temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit reached in October in the north and November in the south. Officially, most of Inner Mongolia is classified as either a cold arid or steppe regime Copen BWK, BSK, respectively. The small portion besides these are classified as humid continental Copen DWB in the northeast, or subarctic Copen DWC in the far north near Hulunbir. Topic. Administrative divisions Topic. Inner Mongolia is divided into 12 prefecture-level divisions. Until the late 1990s, most of Inner Mongolia's prefectural regions were known as leagues Chinese, men a usage retained from Mongol divisions of the Qing dynasty. Similarly, county-level divisions are often known as banners Chinese, since the 1990s, numerous leagues have converted into prefecture-level cities, although banners remain. 
The restructuring led to the conversion of primate cities in most leagues to convert to districts administratively i.e., Hyler, Jinning and Dongsheng. Some newly founded prefecture-level cities have chosen to retain the original name of League i.e., Hulunbir, Bayonur and Yulankob. Some have adopted the Chinese name of their primate city Qifeng, Tong Liao, and one League Yekaju simply renamed itself Ordos. Despite these recent administrative changes, there is no indication that the Alxa, Hingan, and Zilingal leagues will convert to prefecture-level cities in the near future. The 12 prefecture-level divisions of Inner Mongolia are subdivided into 102 county-level divisions, including 22 districts, 11 county-level cities, 17 counties, 49 banners, and 3 autonomous banners. Those are in turn divided into 1425 township level divisions, including 532 towns, 407 townships, 277 sumu, 18 ethnic townships, 1 ethnic sumu, and 190 subdistricts. <inaudible> <inaudible> Urban areas Economy <inaudible> 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 Topic. Farming of crops such as wheat takes precedence along the river valleys. In the more arid grasslands, herding of goats, sheep and so on is a traditional method of subsistence. Forestry and hunting are somewhat important in the Greater Kingan Ranges in the east. Reindeer herding is carried out by Avanks in the Avank Autonomous Banner. More recently, growing grapes and winemaking have become an economic factor in the Y area. Inner Mongolia has an abundance of resources especially coal, cashmere, natural gas, rare earth elements, and has more deposits of naturally occurring niobium, zirconium and beryllium than any other province-level region in China. However, in the past, the exploitation and utilization of resources were rather inefficient, which resulted in poor returns from rich resources. Inner Mongolia is also an important coal production base, with more than a quarter of the world's coal reserves located in the province. It plans to double annual coal output by 2010 from the 2005 volume of 260 million tons to 500 million tons of coal a year. Industry in Inner Mongolia has grown up mainly around coal, power generation, forestry related industries, and related industries. Inner Mongolia now encourages six competitive industries, energy, chemicals, metallurgy, equipment manufacturing, processing of farm including dairy produce, and high technology. Well-known Inner Mongolian enterprises include companies such as Erdish, Yila, and Mengnu. The nominal GDP of Inner Mongolia in 2015 was 1 1.8 trillion yuan .1 billion, with an average annual increase of 10% from the period 2010-2015. Its per capita GDP reached $11,500 in 2015, ranking no fourth among all the 31 provinces of China, only after Shanghai, Beijing and Tianjin. As with much of China, economic growth has led to a boom in construction, including new commercial development and large apartment complexes. In addition to its large reserves of natural resources, Inner Mongolia also has the largest usable wind power capacity in China thanks to strong winds which develop in the province's grasslands. Some private companies have set up wind parks in parts of Inner Mongolia such as Bailingmiao, Huttingliang and Zhaozi. Topic economic and Technological Development Zones Topic Baotou National Rare Earth High Tech Industrial Development Zone Aranhat Border Economic Cooperation Area Hohat Export Processing Zone Hohat Export Processing Zone was established on June 21, 2002, by the State Council, which is located in the west of the Hohat, with a planning area of 2.2 square kilometers (0.85 square miles). Industries encouraged in the export processing zone include electronics assembly and manufacturing, telecommunications equipment, garment and textiles production, trading and distribution, biotechnology, pharmaceuticals, food, beverage processing, instruments and industrial equipment production, medical equipment and supplies, shipping, warehousing, logistics, heavy industry. Hohat Economic and Technological Development Zone Hohat Export Processing Zone Manzuli Border Economic Cooperation Area Topic Government and Politics Topic Under the Constitution of the People's Republic of China, Articles 112-122, Autonomous Regions have limited autonomy in both the political and economic arena. Autonomous regions have more discretion in administering economic policy in the region in accordance with national guidelines. 
Structurally, the chairman, who legally must be an ethnic minority and is usually ethnic Mongolian, is always kept in check by the Communist Party Regional Committee Secretary, who is usually from a different part of China to reduce corruption and Han Chinese. The current party secretary is Wang Jun. The Inner Mongolian government and its subsidiaries follow roughly the same structure as that of a Chinese province. With regards to economic policy, as a part of increased federalism characteristics in China, Inner Mongolia has become more independent in implementing its own economic roadmap. The position of chairman of Inner Mongolia alternates between Korchan Mongols in the east and the Tumd Mongols in the west. Since the end of the Cultural Revolution, this convention has not been broken. The family of Ulanhu has retained influence in regional politics ever since the founding the People's Republic. His son Bu and granddaughter Bu Zhaolin both served as chairman of the region. Topic demographics Topic When the autonomous region was established in 1947, Han Chinese comprised 83.6% of the population, while the Mongols comprised 14.8% of the population. By 2010, the percentage of Han Chinese had dropped to 79.5%. While the Hetao region along the Yellow River has always alternated between farmers from the south and nomads from the north, the most recent wave of Han Chinese migration began in the early 18th century with encouragement from the Qing dynasty, and continued into the 20th century. Han Chinese live mostly in the Hetao region as well as various population centers in central and eastern Inner Mongolia. Over 70% of Mongols are concentrated in less than 18% of Inner Mongolia's territory Hingan League, and the prefectures of Tongliao and Chifeng. Mongols are the second largest ethnic group, comprising 17.11% of the population as of the 2010 census. They include many diverse Mongolian-speaking groups, groups such as the Buryats and the Orats are also officially considered to be Mongols in China. In addition to the Manchus, three other Tungusic ethnic groups, the Dor, the Orokan, and the Avanks also populate parts of northeastern Inner Mongolia. Many of the traditionally nomadic Mongols have settled in permanent homes as their pastoral economy was collectivized during the Mao era, and some have taken jobs in cities as migrant laborers, however, some Mongols continue in their nomadic tradition. In practice, highly educated Mongols tend to migrate to big urban centers after which they become essentially indistinct with ethnic Han Chinese populations. Intermarriage between Mongol and non-Mongol populations is very common, particularly in areas where Mongols are in regular contact with other groups. There was little cultural stigma within Mongol families for marrying outside the ethnic group, and in urban centers in particular, Mongol men and women married non-Mongols at relatively similar rates. The rates of intermarriage stands in very sharp contrast to ethnic Tibetans and Uyghurs in their respective autonomous regions. By the 1980s, for instance, in the former Jurem League, nearly 40% of marriages with at least one Mongol spouse was a mixed Mongol Han Chinese marriage. However, anecdotal reports have also demonstrated an increase in Mongol female, Han Chinese male pairings in which the woman is of a rural background, ostensibly shutting rural Mongol males from the marriage market as the sex ratio in China becomes more skewed with a much higher proportion of men. There is also a significant number of Wei and Koreans. Population numbers exclude members of the People's Liberation Army in active service based in Inner Mongolia. Language and culture Topic. Alongside Chinese, Mongolian is the official provincial language of the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, where there are at least 4.1 million ethnic Mongols. Across the whole of China, the language is spoken by roughly half of the country's 5.8 million ethnic Mongols 2005 estimate. However, the exact number of Mongolian speakers in China is unknown, as there is no data available on the language proficiency of that country's citizens. The use of Mongolian in China, specifically in Inner Mongolia, has witnessed periods of decline and revival over the last few hundred years. The language experienced a decline during the late Qing period, a revival between 1947 and 1965, a second decline between 1966 and 1976, a second revival between 1977 and 1992, and a third decline between 1995 and 2012. 
However, in spite of the decline of the Mongolian language in some of Inner Mongolia's urban areas and educational spheres, the ethnic identity of the urbanized Chinese-speaking Mongols is most likely going to survive due to the presence of urban ethnic communities. The multilingual situation in Inner Mongolia does not appear to obstruct efforts by ethnic Mongols to preserve their language. Although an unknown number of Mongols in China, such as the Tumes, may have completely or partially lost the ability to speak their language, they are still registered as ethnic Mongols and continue to identify themselves as ethnic Mongols. The children of inter ethnic Mongol Chinese marriages also claim to be and are registered as ethnic Mongols. By law, all street signs, commercial outlets, and government documents must be bilingual, written in both Mongolian and Chinese. There are three Mongolian TV channels in the Inner Mongolia Satellite TV Network. In public transportation, all announcements are to be bilingual. Mongols in Inner Mongolia speak Mongolian dialects such as Chakar, Zilingal, Baran, Korchan and Karchan Mongolian and, depending on definition and analysis, further dialects or closely related independent Central Mongolic languages such as Ordos, Komnigan, Bargu Buryat and the arguably Orat dialect Alasha. The standard pronunciation of Mongolian in China is based on the Chakar dialect of the Plain Blue Banner, located in central Inner Mongolia, while the grammar is based on all southern Mongolian dialects. This is different from the Mongolian state, where the standard pronunciation is based on the closely related Khalkha dialect. There are a number of independent languages spoken in Hulun Bir such as the somewhat more distant Mongolic language Dagur and the Tungusic language Avenki. Officially, even the Avenki dialect Orokin is considered a language. The Han Chinese of Inner Mongolia speak a variety of dialects, depending on the region. Those in the eastern parts tend to speak northeastern Mandarin, which belongs to the Mandarin group of dialects. Those in the central parts, such as the Yellow River Valley, speak varieties of Jin, another subdivision of Chinese, due to its proximity to other Jin speaking areas in China, such as the Shaanxi province. Cities such as Hohat and Baotou both have their unique brand of Jin Chinese such as the Zhangjiakou Hohat dialect which are sometimes incomprehensible with dialects spoken in northeastern regions such as Hyler. The vast grasslands have long symbolized Inner Mongolia. Mongolian art often depicts the grassland in an uplifting fashion and emphasizes Mongolian nomadic traditions. The Mongols of Inner Mongolia still practice their traditional arts. Inner Mongolian cuisine has Mongol roots and consists of dairy-related products and handheld lamb. Shobar. In recent years, franchises based on hot pot have appeared in Inner Mongolia, the best known of which is Zaofayang. Notable Inner Mongolian commercial brand names include Mengyu and Yila, both of which began as dairy product and ice cream producers. Among the Han Chinese of Inner Mongolia, Jinju Jin or Shangxi opera is a popular traditional form of entertainment. See also, Shangxi. A popular career in Inner Mongolia is circus acrobatics. The internationally known Inner Mongolia acrobatic troupe travels and performs with the renowned Ringling Bros and Barnum and Bailey Circus. <inaudible> Religion <inaudible> According to a survey held in 2004 by the Minzu University of China, about 80% of the population of the region practice the worship of heaven that is named Tian in the Chinese tradition and Tenjur in the Mongolian tradition and of Ovu, Aobao. Official statistics report that 12.1% of the population 3 million people are members of Tibetan Buddhist groups. According to the Chinese Spiritual Life Survey of 2007 and the Chinese General Social Survey of 2009, Christianity is the religious identity of 2% of the population of the region, and Chinese ancestral religion the professed belonging of 2.36%, while a demographic analysis of the year 2010 reported that Muslims comprise the 0.91%. The cult of Genghis Khan, present in the form of various Genghis Khan temples, is a tradition of Mongolian shamanism, in which he is considered a cultural hero and divine ancestor, an embodiment of the Tenjur heaven, god of heaven. His worship in special temples, greatly developed in Inner Mongolia since the 1980s, is also shared by the Han Chinese, claiming his spirit as the founding principle of the Yuan dynasty. Tibetan Buddhism, Mongolian Buddhism, locally also known as Yellow Buddhism, is the dominant form of Buddhism in Inner Mongolia, also practiced by many Han Chinese. Another form of Buddhism, practiced by the Chinese, are the schools of Chinese Buddhism. Tourism 
Topic In the capital city Hohat, Dajiao Temple is a Lamaist temple built in 1580. Dazeo Temple is known for three sites: a statue of Buddha made from silver, elaborate carvings of dragons, and murals. Five Pagoda Temple is located in the capital of Inner Mongolia, Hohat. It is also called Jingingzuo Dagoba, used to be one building of the Siddang Temple, Temple of Merciful Light, built in 1727. Residence of Gurun Princess Kejing is a mansion typical of Qing dynasty architectural style that was built in 1705 by the Kangxi Emperor for his daughter. Wanbu Wayanjing Pagoda in Hohat. It was built during the reign of Emperor Shengzong of the Khitan Liao dynasty and is still well preserved. Xiaojiao Temple, also known as Changfu Temple, is a Lamaist temple built in 1697 and favored by the Kangxi Emperor of the Qing Dynasty. Xilitu Zhao, Syrigtu Juu Temple is the largest Lamaist temple in the Hohat area, and once the center of power of Lamaism in the region. Zhaojun Tomb is the tomb of Wang Zhaojun, a Han Dynasty palace lady in waiting who became the consort of the Xiongnu ruler Huhanye Shanyu in 33 BC elsewhere in Inner Mongolia. The Mausoleum of Genghis Khan, the Cenotaph of Genghis Khan, is located in Ordo City. Bashang Grasslands, on the border close to Beijing, is a popular retreat for urban residents wanting to get a taste of grasslands life. The Arshahati Stone Forest in Hexigten Global Geopark has magnificent granite rock formations formed from natural erosion. Shangshawan, or Singing Sands Gorge is located in the Gobi Desert and contains numerous tourist attractions including sand sledding and camel rides. Remains of Zongjing Central Capital built in 1003 by Emperor Shengzong of the Khitan Liao Dynasty in Ningcheng County. Remains of Shangjing Upper Capital built in 918 by Yelu Abaoji the first emperor of the Khitan Liao Dynasty also called Wangdu it was one of the five capitals of the Liao dynasty. Zuling Mausoleum of Abaoji Khan. It was built in 926 for Abaoji the first emperor of the Liao dynasty. Located northwest of Shifangzi village. Tablets of Juyan. Han dynasty 206 BC to 220 AD inscriptions on wood and bamboo. In 1930 Folk Bergman of the Sino-Swedish expedition first discovered 10,000 tablets at Ejin Koshu in the Gobi Desert. Ruins of Shangdu Zanadu, the summer capital of the Mongol Yuan dynasty built in 1256 by Kublai Khan. White Pagoda of the Mongol Yuan dynasty 1279 in Kailu County, Tongliao. It is still well preserved. Ruins of Chagan Koto, Chagan Haute, capital of the last Mongol Great Khan Ligdan, 1588 to 1634, located in Arhorkan Banner. Topic: <laughs> Image Gallery. Topic: <laughs> Topic: <laughs> Chinese Space Program. Topic. One of China's space vehicle launch facilities, Jukan Satellite Launch Center, is located in the extreme west of Inner Mongolia, in the Alksa League's Ejin Banner. It was founded in 1958, making it the PRC's first launch facility. More Chinese launches have occurred at Jukan than anywhere else. As with all Chinese launch facilities, it is remote and generally closed to the public. It is named as such since Jukan is the nearest urban center, although Jukan is in the nearby province of Gansu. Many space vehicles have also made their touchdowns in Inner Mongolia. For example, the crew of Shenzhou 6 landed in Sizawing Banner, near Hohat. Education <inaudible> 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 Colleges and universities Topic. Inner Mongolia Agricultural University Ober Mong Gamma Ol Untarialing Un Yeke Sur Gamma A Gamma Uli Ne Men Gu Nong Yi Da Ze Inner Mongolia University Ober Mong Gamma Ol Un Yeke Sur Gamma A Gamma Uli 
Ne men gu da ze hulun beer university hulun beer sir gamma a gamma uli hulun be er ze yuan chifeng university ula gamma ankata dejidu sir gamma a gamma uli kai feng ze yuan inner mongolia finance and economics college ober mong gamma ol un ed un jasa gamma aju a ki yin dejidu sir gamma a gamma uli Ne men gu kai jing ze yuan inner mongolia medical college ober mong gamma ol un emnelj yin dejidu sir gamma a gamma uli Ne men gu yi ze yuan inner mongolia normal university ober mong gamma ol un ba gamma si yin yeke sir gamma a gamma uli Ne men gu shi fan da ze inner mongolia university for nationalities ober mong gamma ol un undusutan yu yeke sir gamma a gamma uli Ne men gu min zu da ze Inner Mongolia University of Science and Technology. Ne men gu kg da ze Inner Mongolia University of Technology. Ober mong gamma ol un aju ulebori yin yeke sir gamma a gamma uli. Ne men gu gong yi da ze. All of the above are under the authority of the autonomous region government. Institutions without full time bachelor programs are not listed. Topic. See also Topic Leagues of Inner Mongolia List of administrative divisions of Inner Mongolia Major national historical and cultural sites in Inner Mongolia East Asian snowstorms of 2009-2010 Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Further reading Topic Borjigan, Monkbat. A case study of language education in the Inner Mongolia. Archive, Japanese title. Ne Mongoru Zijiku Neokeru Yan Yu Jiao Yun Journal of Chiba University Eurasian Society Qian Yi Da Ze Yu Rishia Yan Yu Wen Hua Lun G16, 261-266, 25 September 2014. Chiba University Eurasian Society, Qian Yi Da Ze Yu Rishia Yan Yu Wen Hua Lun Zhang See profile at Chiba University Repository. See profile at Sini, in English with a Japanese abstract. Yin Tiang Chong 1933. The Economic Development and Prospects of Inner Mongolia Shahar, Suyuan, and Ningxia. Commercial Press, Ltd. p. 117. Topic. External links Topic. In Chinese Inner Mongolia Government Website In Mongolian Inner Mongolia Government Website Welcome to Inner Mongolia Mongolia Tours with Samar Magic Tours Inner Mongolia Travel Guide from Wikivoyage